Okay, so how are we going to go from our methods being called to moving our player around? Well, isn't that the million dollar question? So we're still going to use the velocities and stuff, but here's how we're going to do it. We're going to detect when the arrow keys are pressed up and down in our key press method. And if we find that our arrow key is being pressed, if the if statement we're going to write returns true, then we're going to set the velocity for the player so that the... Let's see. Uh, maybe I can show you a little bit better. So an update will have y equals y plus y velocity. And we're initially going to set the y velocity to zero. So the player is not moving at all when the game first starts. Oh, that was stupid. Two semicolons. Okay, so at this point, when the game starts, uh, the player is going to be updated a bunch of times, and he's not going to be moving anywhere. Because right now, we're increasing the y by zero. So he's not going to be moving anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple methods down here. Public void. Actually, just one method, really. Set y velocity. Okay, let's see. Int. Speed. So let's see. Uh, and all that's going to do is we're going to say the y velocity. Equals, uh, I don't know, the ball's going at 4, so we'll go at 5, slightly faster. Or, actually, I don't know why I did that, I'm an idiot. There we go. Y velocity equals speed, that's what we want. So when we call this method, we pass in a number of how fast we want the player to be moving. Um, and a negative number will make them go up. And we just set the velocity of that. So we call this method set to 4. So the y velocity is equal 4. On the next update, y equals y plus 4. So it'll start moving. And then if we want to stop it, we can just set that to 0. So it's, it's pretty cool how we can do that. And we can set that in here. So keep press. We can say if, and now we're going to get some information on that key event we got passed. We can say if e dot, that's not what I want, dot get key code, and this returns the ASCII value of the key that was pressed, and the ASCII value is just a, it's just a number that, um, kind of represents a key, and uh, it can keep track of that itself. And we don't have to remember the ASCII values, because there's a whole bunch of uh, static variables in key event, just to make it easier for us. And we'll say VK up. So that's the static variable for the up key. So we're going to ask the key event, okay, well, can I have the key code of which key was pressed? And we're going to see if it's equal to the same ASCII value that the up key is. And we can just use the key event dot VK up shortcut. So they went ahead and that was nice of them to give us that variable so we don't have to memorize all 400 million key codes. And VK, if you're wondering, stands for virtual key. I don't know why they did that. Um, okay, so right now we have it. Uh, it's going to be checking in the background for 
any key to be pressed at all. So when a key is pressed, it's going to let game panel know key pressed will be called. And then we're, we're deciding that we want to check if the up key is being pressed. And if it is, now we have the freedom to do whatever we want when the up key is pressed. But obviously what we're going to do is we want the player to have a velocity. So we made our ball here. Let's make our player. 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 Equals. New. Player. And I understand these videos are kind of going to a slow pace, but I want you guys to understand what I'm talking about. So, and not just, you know, what I don't want is for you guys to copy and paste what I'm typing on the screen. I want you to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing uh, the things I'm doing. Wow, that was a mouthful. Holy crap. So we have our player now, and we can just say player dot set velocity, that method we just made five seconds ago. And we want to go up. And remember, up is in the negative direction. So we want to go negative four. And we need to say y velocity. Boy, well, I'm just on a roll today, aren't I? Okay, cool. So now, when the key is pressed, um, we'll check and see if it's an up key. If it is, we'll tell the player to start moving up. So that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now Compile that. Oh, you know what? That's not going to compile. Because I didn't compile the player class yet with the new method. So let's do that first. That's because I didn't recognize the new set y velocity because I didn't compile player. There we go. That should work better. Let's see. Alright, cool. So. Uh, we did that. Let's actually make it so we can see our player. So for painting, we'll just paint a rectangle based on the X position. And remember we have the X, or not the X position, boy, wow. Um, the Y position that we're keeping track of that moves around with the velocity. Uh, X position is always going to stay the same. We're not moving the paddle left and right, just like normal Pong. So we can use our graphics object that game panel also graciously gives us. Uh, we can do... You can do fill rect or draw rect. Draw rect just makes the outline, whereas fill rect makes an outline and colors it. So we have a nice filled-in square, nothing hollow. So the first, obviously we have our four uh, integers, uh, the top left of the box and uh, how wide and how tall we want it to be. So X is always going to stay the same. I'm going to say X is at, I don't know, 75. Sure, it honestly doesn't matter. So it's always going to be just a little bit out from the left. So there's room behind the player. And we're going to use our Y value that we're keeping track of. And remember we made width and height up here. So this is how how fat and how tall we want our player. And we already made that, so we can just say width and height. Okay, compile that. And now, let's see, well, let's see if that works first. All right, cool. Now we'll head over to game panel and we'll update the player as well as our ball. Jesus, what is wrong with me? Okay, update. And remember, we have to do this after uh, we make our our clearing screen rectangle. So we draw on top of it. Let's see. No, no, I don't want to do anything with G, but thanks for asking. Player dot paint. So the player is going to paint itself, and the ball is going to paint itself, and we'll pass on G. 
Okay, so that should work now. I should be able to show you guys. Okay, let's give it a go. Oh, I'm stupid. I didn't set a color. Wow. So it's going to be white. And that's pretty damn boring. So let's set a color. G. Dot set. Color. How about a nice yellow? Actually, no, I want you guys to be able to see it fairly well. So let's do red. Red sticks out nice. And of course. Oh, again, we have to import our stuff. This just gets annoying after a while. That's the good thing about Eclipse and stuff like that is it imports all your stuff for you when you use a class that's that ha would have to be imported normally. It'll automatically import it when you go to use it. So, okay. Okay, because what happened before was uh, I set the color to white, I draw a nice background uh, rectangle just to clear the screen, and then the player gets painted, and I never set a different color, so it was going to be white on top of white. So the player was there, we just couldn't see him. Okay, that should be better. Let's see. There he is. We didn't set an initial Y position, though, which is kind of... It looks kind of weird. So let me do that before I test that. So we have some moving room. We'll set Y initially. To 250, we'll say. Why not? No, 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 zero. Okay. Okay. Now after that embarrassment... Alright, I think that might be a little too fat for the player. There goes our ball. Okay, our player's not moving, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the up key right now. Oh! Of course, I can't stop him now, because we didn't, we didn't uh, code for any of that. But I'm going to run that again. But he moves up when we hit up. I'm hitting spacebar right now, nothing happens. Uh, key press is getting called, but it's not doing anything because we're only checking for the up key. Pressing some random keys, nothing's happening. But I'll press up. There we go, cool. Awesome. Our ball's still moving. Awesome. Alright, so in the next video, we're just going to finish that up a little bit so that we can control the player a little bit better. So he stops uh, when we uh, tell him to, when we let go of the key. And so that when he goes, when he hits the top, he can't go any further. So the player won't be able to walk off the screen.